New England is filled with brilliant creative thinkers and entrepreneurs. Many are working to develop more energy efficient products while revitalizing our economy at the same time. NECN's Josh McKeldin takes a look at Canarca, a company which has turned a revolutionary idea into reality. How about a cell phone that you never really have to charge? or a laptop computer, or just about any portable electronic device. Well, all of it could soon be the result of the kind of science being applied here at Canarca, a Lowell, Massachusetts-based company focused squarely on the search for renewable energy. I really see this next generation of how, how do we solve the energy problem um, as well as the climate change problem as, as a key issue. And Canarca is making progress in a field that has been around a while, solar power. These you know, the big silicon solar panels found on homes and businesses. But Canarca has taken that concept and developed this, a lightweight, flexible material called power plastic. You can bend it and roll it and fold it. Um, it makes it very amenable to people who want to carry it around to charge their cell phone or their laptop, or if you're camping and want to power a light um, that's battery operated, so you charge it during the day when the sun's out and you use the light at nighttime. So there's a lot of interesting applications. And the material can use indoor light as well. Engineer Dick Estes gives us a little show and tell. Keep your eye on the fan at the bottom right hand corner of your screen. If I open this up and just expose the panel to the light, all right, I can start the photovoltaic reaction in the cell. And you can see that the motor's uh, spinning a little, little homemade fan we made here. So what kind of mad science would you figure it takes to create this so-called power plastic? Well, actually, the simplicity of it is stunning in itself. That's because the material is printable. The machine itself is actually designed as a label maker. So people would do all sorts of uh, coatings and flexo printing and so on to make labels. And uh, obviously, we, we, we've bought this machine in here. And uh, we've done some retrofitting to make it specific for uh, uh, making the organic uh, photovoltaics. But basically, yeah, we're making solar cells with a, uh, with a label maker. Canurka's innovations represent the third generation of solar technology. This is absolutely cutting edge. And protecting their work requires no less than 300 patents worldwide. And as you can imagine, there is also a huge premium placed on quality control. That's why the engineers work in a highly secure and sterile environment, although you'd never know it from the outside of the facility. Canarca's labs and offices are housed in a remodeled textile mill in downtown Lowell. The company employs 65 people, and most of whom were drawn here because of Canarca's guiding philosophy. People like Jenny Stolalanis. I'm very concerned with the environment, so it's very important to me. I came from a financial services company, and I was doing the same work, administrative work, and um, it's more meaningful for me to work for a company that I know is doing something for the environment. It's always nice to be doing something that uh, could really change the world and, and make the world a better place. So I think um, literally, you know, we get a lot of letters in the mail uh, every day of people who want to work um, at Canarca or companies like this because they see the issue um, with climate change. And again, I think it's becoming more and more recognizable that uh, something has to be done. So when will Canarca's innovations become mainstream? Well, right now, the power plastic is drawing interest from companies and the military for countless applications. Applications which could range in uses as small as self-powered cell phones to one day self-contained skyscrapers. But for Canarca, the future is now. The commercial production of their product is scheduled to begin by the end of this year. In Lowell, Massachusetts, Josh McKelvin, NECN. Remarkable, remarkable operation amazing. out there, Paul Gerling. Yeah, amazing. And uh, uh, the secretary probably knows precisely how many there are, but there are hundreds of companies apparently in Massachusetts uh, like this working on uh, innovative things. And it raises the question for me, you know, we've always thought from the earliest days of the environmental movement that if you're going to be environmentally conscious, it was going to be a drag on the economy. Could it be in this case, particularly in Massachusetts with our innovation economy, our great universities, so many smart people, could it actually be a boon to the economy that we really have to solve these problems? Could this be an area of uh, business and jobs growth for Massachusetts, which, as we've discussed in previous programs, is really needed? Well, we don't have a lot of natural resources. We don't have any oil fields or natural gas wells here, but we do have a lot of brain power. Uh, let's re let me reintroduce the guests, and then we'll, we'll uh, get back on this subject. Uh, back with our panelists, Ian Bowles, Massachusetts Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs, Deborah Donovan, Project Manager for the Cambridge Energy Alliance, 
Carter Wall, Executive Vice President and COO of Power Options, and architect David Lee is a partner of Stull and Lee. All right, uh, Mr. Bowles, uh, talk about how many companies like this. You mentioned, I think, over 200 in Massachusetts. Uh, over 500, over in fact. 500. Uh, we've got uh, second only to California in terms of being a center for energy technology innovation. Last year in the Commonwealth alone, we had a quarter billion dollars of private venture capital put into energy technology firms. We've got 550 firms. We've got 400, uh, about 14,000 people in the workforce, 11th largest sector in the state, and growing very quickly. So it is an area, I think Paul's exactly right, of major economic opportunity. I think Governor Patrick has really elevated clean energy to take its place alongside life sciences and financial services and some of the other hallmark uh, uh, sectors in our economy. We've had a number of wins just this week. We had Evergreen, Evergreen Solar, Solar yeah. uh, expand to a thousand people in their workforce when we took office, there were about 250 there, two manufacturing plants for solar PV. We've had, we won a national competition to be one of two states to host a wind blade test facilities as a national Department of Energy chartered institution which will be testing the ever increasingly large wind blades that go on wind turbines. Um, so we're really working hard on building this cluster and we've had a number of really good successes and we have all the ingredients. We've got the most talented workforce in the nation. We've got uh, a large amount of venture capital and a huge en uh, entrepreneurial community. Places like UMass and MIT are real national leaders in energy. What can the state do? Or, you know, we, We've talked in previous programs about how tough historically it is to get things permitted in Massachusetts. In some ways, it's still not a business-friendly environment. Are, are you working with the economic czar, Dan O'Connell, sure. on, on making it easier for these companies to expand we are. and grow? Um, we're focusing on two sides of that equation. First is on the regulatory side. So we've made sweeping changes to a number of our environmental regulatory um, uh, permit programs in order to uh, expedite the green energy type of work. We talked a bit about earlier in the program about the utility rate structure uh, and the need for competition. Anyone who's trying to build um, a solar facility or a fuel cell or a flywheel or a combined heat and power out there at the end of the wires, historically we, the utilities have made that very difficult for you because we've given them economic incentives. Say if you're building, generating that power on site, uh, that utility is losing money that's the, of the power that's not flowing through the wires to them. When they're using it right on site, they lose money. They make it hard for you. So so we're making big changes on the regulatory side, and then we've been very aggressive. Governor Patrick has personally been involved in talking to a lot of the clean energy company CEOs and working company by company with them on what are they trying to do, what product are they trying to bring to market, where are they trying to expand, what are their workforce needs. So it's really become one of the main parts of our economic strategy. We work very closely with the economic team on it. You know, you know, Ian, another thing that's really cool about that is that they're doing this whiz-bang technology in an old building mm -hmm. in Lowell. <laughs> yeah. So you're getting the dual benefit of one, taking advantage of the resources that it already took to build that building in the first place, and secondly, it's providing jobs and economic stimulation for you know a, a, a town a that needs yeah. uh, needs well, that kind of stuff. Because it's all happening here, the consumers in Massachusetts get it first. We get the stuff first. I was going through um, the lobby of a hotel the other day. And I saw this hotel was, was showing off this little device, this little energy device that uh, they had just gotten, you know. So we actually get the stuff before everybody else does.